All right, so it is now day eight, for me anyway, and I'm going to be hitting the road, heading to Duluth today. So it's uh, seven o'clock in the morning here. We thought the food truck would be open to grab some coffee, but they're not open until Wednesday. So we're, we're out of luck, <laughs> but that's okay. Uh, we may wait till the Tamarack Inn comes on, uh, open at eight, and then hit grab some coffee and hit the road, or maybe we'll just hit the road. I don't know. We'll see. But anyway, it's been a great uh, time here traveling with Todd. I really appreciate you putting me up and feeding me and yeah. uh, taking care of me this whole time. So that's uh, really great. Yeah. Thanks, and I really for, appreciate uh, it. for letting me be part of your journey to Alaska. It's been, it's been wonderful. It's been a real pleasure. So thank you and appreciate it, and uh, I wish you all the safe travels. Uh, up to Alaska and back home again. Bye, everyone. We'll see you soon. Well, thank you. Appreciate that very much. So we decided uh, we're not waiting for coffee. We're getting on the road. It's about 7.15 right now. Uh, we're going to go and find something out there. Todd's heading back home. I'm headed to Duluth. And by the way, guys, the peanuts worked. <laughs> As Todd and I took off on the morning of day eight, you might notice that once again, it's dark and gloomy. Yep, this for sure is getting to be a pattern. After riding for a little bit, we found a place for coffee, a local Burger King, and said our final goodbyes. I would then spend another two hours on the road looking at the dark clouds in front of me. About 10.30, I found a place to pull over for a late breakfast. So it's about 10.30 in the morning now, so I've been on the road for, uh, I guess, two and a half, three hours. And uh, decided to stop at uh, this little restaurant I found in a little small town here. Just getting close to Minnesota now, about, you know, I don't know, 10, 20 miles. And uh, then we're headed into Duluth. Looks like some storms are gonna roll through here before too long, but I checked the radar and most of the bad stuff looks to be south. So keeping my fingers crossed. Well, no sooner than I had finished my breakfast, put on my gear and stepped outside, it started raining. And it continued to rain for most of the rest of the day just clearing up as I pulled into Duluth. After arriving in Duluth, I got to meet a viewer, Jeff, and we headed over to the Aerostitch factory. Aerostitch was formed in 1983 when avid motorcyclist Andy Goldfein decided that he wanted to produce a lightweight garment that would allow him to commute all year in bad weather and help protect him from crashes. The result was the classic road crafter motorcycle suit. Now this was the first suit to combine the use of Gore-Tex breathable waterproof fabric with a highly abrasion resistant Cordura. Today there are of course many manufacturers using this layering technology, but Aerostitch was the first. Today Aerostitch produces and sells a wide variety of motorcycle related equipment. And that is what Andy emphasizes his gear is. They are designed to be pieces of equipment. Aerostitch gear is not for the person who wants to make a fashion statement. It's for the person who wants to protect themselves from the elements and from the road. And you know what I think I like most about buying an Aerostitch product? It's that Andy is keeping alive a skill and an industry that has been all but lost here in this country, and that is quality garment manufacturing. So today I'm in Duluth, Minnesota, and we stop by the Arrow Stitch factory and showroom, and I'm here with Andy Goldfein, the founder and owner of Arrow Stitch, and he's been kind enough to give us a tour today, uh, really cool stuff to see, and uh, just let us uh, basically bend his ear 
a little bit. So and tell us all kinds of cool stories. So thanks, Andy, for having us. Thank you for coming. I wish I could go with you on your way up to Alaska. All right. Well, it's going to be fun, and it looks like it's going to be wet. It will be wet, but I've been, <laughs> I've been up there on my bike, and it was a lot of fun. Yeah, no, we went up there uh, in uh, 2017, me and a couple other guys. We had a blast, and that's why I want to go back again and do a little bit of uh, different stuff than we got to see. The there is a time. lot to see up there, that's there for sure. There is. I figure there's going to be a couple of more trips somewhere in the future. Yeah, so. <laughs> it's, it should be a blast. All right. Well, thank you, sir. I really appreciate it very much. Thanks for coming. All right, so this gentleman right here is Jeff. He is one of my viewers, and he drove up from Minneapolis, St. Paul, uh, to see me here in Duluth. And uh, we went to the Arrow Stitch Factory together, had a great time, and great then out time. to dinner. Yeah. And uh, so thank you very much, Jeff. Appreciate you joining me, and also thank you so much for dinner. Really Absolutely, it. Craig. It's a pleasure to meet you, and good luck on the rest of your trip. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Good morning. I'm in Duluth today. It's about 6.35 in the morning. And I'm going to go down and grab myself uh, some coffee and a little quick bite to eat before I leave. Uh, but this is a day that, uh, honestly, I'm not looking very forward to. <laughs> because we've got uh, some thunderstorms out there that I have to go through to get to where I want to go. And there's not really any way to get around them. So we're just going to go out and uh, so leave here a little bit early uh, and then see if we can find a way to punch through them. If I have to pull over and uh, wait for a while, you know, somewhere, uh, then we'll do that. Uh, but we're going to get as far as we can uh, before we hit those storms again and then see if we can get through them. Now I am waiting for some socks to finish drying got some waterproof socks that I brought with me and it takes a bit to get them dry you got to dry them inside and then dry them outside so that's what I'm doing right now finishing up a cup of coffee and uh, then finish packing and I'll go battle the monster all right Let's go finish packing. All right, so time to finish up and put all the clothes on. So here's my layering system that I'm gonna be using today. First, I have my LD Comfort long sleeve base layer. Then my Patagonia little puffy down jacket. On top of that, my Aero Stitch Windstop waterproof layer. And then on top of it all, my Aero Stitch Darien jacket. To keep my hands dry, I'll be wearing my AeroStitch triple digit gloves, and those will go over the top of my AeroStitch deerskin gloves. Let me come clean with you here about a couple of things. First of all, the footage that you see here is not from day nine. It's actually from my previous day's battle with the elements. But on day nine, since I had to punch through these big, heavy storms, I just left the cameras and the side cases because I wanted to make sure I paid attention to what I was doing. Now, in the end, I only had about 30 minutes or so of really hard rain. The rest of the day was just a continuous drizzle <laughs> pretty much all day long into Devil's Lake. The second thing is that while I was at Aerostitch, Andy said to me, hey, what do you have for rain gear? And so I, I told him basically it was my Darien jacket that I was using for my main rain gear. Well, he said, no, 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 you need a couple of other pieces. And he gave me that inner layer. That's a Gore-Tex windstop layer. And he also gave me those three finger gloves. I call them lobster claws. And let me tell you, that stuff, it was a lifesaver during this trip. I mean, the rain was coming down so hard. If I didn't have that stuff, especially those gloves, I'd have been a little wet. I'm about two hours out from Devil's Lake right now, and it's still wet. <laughs> I keep going in and out of these little showers. Hasn't been too bad, though. Uh, you know, a couple of harder rains, but most of it's been just fine. 
So uh, like I said, two more hours and we'll be in Devil's Lake. So at the end of day nine here, I'm in Devil's Lake, North Dakota. And uh, as you can see here, a, a, a big gold ring group that I guess is from Quebec, I believe is what I was told, uh, just pulled in here. So I'll, I said hello to a couple of them, but we'll see if we can maybe chat with any of them later on this evening. But um, today was uh, was a, a, an interesting day um, for a few reasons. Uh, first of all, is one of those days that you know I started dreading actually the night before because I knew that uh, the forecast wasn't going to be very good. So you start looking at the radar, you start looking at future forecasts. And you see that, oh my God, there's going to be these, this big line of thunderstorms that is forming. So you start thinking, oh my God, you know, should I go through them? Should I look for a way around them? Should I bunk down here for the night and, you know, change plans up? And you start getting in your own head a little bit, right, about all of that stuff. So I, I went to bed and figured, well, I'll just get up in the morning and I'll check the radar again. And I did, and I could see that, again, there was this line of thunderstorms that was going to be in my way between Duluth and, uh, I believe, uh, Grand Forks, uh, North Dakota. And I knew I was going to hit it somewhere in between there. I was hoping to hit it as late as possible, put some miles under my belt. So I got up and I got on the road early about 7.30 and I, uh, I guess I hit the first line of storms about an hour, hour and 15 minutes or so into it. And it was coming down pretty good, um, but I was still able to continue. And I guess it came down like that for probably 15 or 20 minutes and then it started letting up a little bit. All right, so then I was able to continue on with no problem. And then the day even had parts of it that the sun came out for a little bit. Um, so I guess what I learned there, right, is that, you know, we have this tendency to uh, make things harder than they really are. Right? I mean, all of us do this, right? We as human beings, are constantly looking for problems and very often times if we don't have any we'll make some stuff up I mean just look at all the shit that's going on in the world right now a lot of it is just made up stuff right and I mean I was doing that to myself I think on this right I was getting in my own head and just starting to to create problems for myself that really weren't there I didn't need to try to go 300 miles out of the way to get out of the storm, and really I couldn't because it was going to go way down uh, into uh, Nebraska and Oklahoma, I think, uh, by the end of the day anyway. Um, so, you know, I just said, I just got into my head and I, I just uh, made things up, right? And it turned out to be not really that big a deal. Now, at the end of the day, it did get kind of dreary and cold. We just didn't really rain, but just had this mist that was constantly in the air. You know, as I passed uh, Grand Forks, North Dakota, and, you know, moved across the state towards Devil's Lake here, right, the last two hours of the ride was in the 50s. It dropped down to as low as 54 and then climbed up a little bit as I got into the day. So, you know, that was a little more challenging actually than riding through all of the hard rain there in the beginning of it, right? The longer duration of the cold and the damp, and then there was a side wind that was blowing as well. So all of those things, right, those really were a challenge to make it through. And it's just one of those times when you just have to basically suck it up, right? And just continue on and keep pushing on, right? And it reminded me of, uh, you know, the term adventure. You know, that 
a lot of us throw that word around really easily. We now have, quote, adventure bikes, and anytime you ride off road, it's an adventure, right? But if you're riding on road, well, it's not an adventure. Well, I think that's just a bunch of bull, quite honestly. Because what I went through today, right, really was an adventure, right? Riding through heavy rains, right? Riding through cold temps, through winds that were causing me to lean the bike over to, you know, maintain my heading, right? Uh, so all of those things were a challenge, right? And that is what adventure is, at least I think to me, it's really overcoming some kind of challenge. Right? And to say that just because you're riding on the street it's not an adventure is, well, just a load of crap. All right, so here I am this morning in uh, Devil's Lake, North Dakota, and uh, I'd say today everything looks a lot nicer than it did. Yesterday we got blue skies and the sun is shining, so I'm really looking forward to riding today <laughs> over yesterday. Uh, but we have a longer day today. I've got well, about 468 miles to go, uh, so it's going to be a long one. We'll get on the road a little bit early today uh, and uh, head towards uh, said Malta. So. I'm looking forward to a good one today. Finally, a sunny day. But I'm going to uncover the bike first, and I'm going to pull out the uh, heated gear because it's like 48 degrees right now. After filling up with fuel, I jumped on the single road that I would be riding for the 465 miles of this day, and that is US 2. It would take me all the way into Malta, and most of it would go through country that looked like what you see here. Occasionally, just to break up the monotony, I would ride past an interesting structure like this. I believe these are grain silos. Either that or they're going to be launching the space shuttle pretty soon. Along the way, I did get to stop at the geographical center of North America in Rugby, North Dakota. After that, it was back to the long, flat, and green. So I'm in Minot, North Dakota, right now, about 120 miles into the day. Stopped at a travel center, grabbed myself some coffee, and warm up a little bit. Now, of course, once I had filled up and warmed up, well, you guess it, it was back to those long, straight roads with those beautiful green fields. So right now, I'm on my way to Malta, Montana. I'm on the Fort Peck Indian Reservation, just about to go off of that. I am in Point Wolf and I've got about 120 miles or so left to go. And then I'll be in for the evening. It's been a gorgeous day, a little chilly in spots, but no clouds and no rain. So at this point, the landscape did start to become a little bit more interesting. However, I also started my constant, never ending and losing battle with the bugs. Finally, after what was a truly great day of riding, I pulled into the sprawling metropolis of Malta, Montana, and found my hotel for the evening. So I made it. This is the longest day that I have planned on this trip by, well, probably about 100 miles or so. And it was 465 miles to get here. Uh, but it was a great day, uh, cool as I had said earlier, 
uh, you know, especially in the morning in the 50s, but I had the heated gear going and using my layers and everything was fine. Uh, then coming here, had some beautiful clouds with a nice thunderstorm off to the right hand side, but it stayed out there. And now I'm here in town and it is starting to rain just a little bit, but now that I'm here, <laughs> that's okay. Again, great day of riding. My body, well, I feel it here and there, but overall, I did really well. And uh, as I said, that was the longest day I have planned, so I don't have to worry about that anymore. Malta is a really small town. There's not a whole lot here. Uh, so I'm staying at a place called the Royals Inn, which from what I saw online, looked to be the nicest place in town. But it's about $81 a night, so it uh, doesn't cost all that much. So let me give you a little tour. So again, this is probably a place that my wife would not want to stay. All right, very old. All right, but, you know, it seems like it's pretty clean. All right, it's got a little kitchenette in there. Got an area to sit down. You know, with a desk. All right, so in here in the kitchen, there's a stove, there's a refrigerator, there's a sink, there's a microwave. Yeah, more than I'm gonna need. And then of course, there's the bedroom in here with a beautiful elk on the wall. And of course, I get to park the bike right out there in front of the room. Well, after cleaning up, it was time to go out and explore this small western town. And what better place to start than the Great Plains Dinosaur Museum? Now, unfortunately, they were closing in less than 30 minutes, so I didn't bother to go in. But next time I'm in town, I'm going to have to check it out. All right, now let's uh, go see if we can find something to eat. I'm going to jump the tracks here. And uh, there's a, a little bar and grill back here that the guy at the desk of the motel said was a, a good place to eat. All right, I made it. Didn't get hit by the train, so... We'll keep going to the place to eat. Alright, so they don't start serving in there until 5 o'clock, which is about a half an hour. Uh, so I'll walk around here and see if I can ward off the mosquitoes. I looked down earlier, I've got shorts on and my legs were covered with mosquitoes. I'm like, Ugh. Well, after checking out everything that Malta had to offer and finally killing it enough time, I could go back to the bar and have dinner with the locals. It actually was pretty darn good. Well, damn, this is an easier way to cross. And here comes the train. So got up this morning, figured, you know what? They got a full-size coffee maker here in uh, this room. I'll just make myself some coffee this morning. Well, when I open this thing up, it 
doesn't exactly inspire confidence that I would get a good cup of coffee. All right, so we'll head out and uh, see if I can find myself a cup of coffee this morning. There's a little gas station down here. They'll probably have some coffee brewing. You can always find some interesting things in these small towns. That was successful. Got me a little coffee. Now I can sit down and kind of relax for the rest of the morning. Because it's, uh, it's just a little after six. Don't need to get out of here super early today. Much shorter day today. Time to hit the road. Leaving town and headed towards St. Mary and Glacier National Park, I knew that the terrain would slowly start to change. First there would be hills and small little valleys, and then suddenly out in the distance, the mountains would start to rise. It wasn't too long after that that it was time to stop and eat because I didn't grab anything before I left Malta. So I found a great little diner and once again enjoyed a late breakfast. All right, I just finished with a little late breakfast. Now I'm gonna go in and do the scariest thing that I have to do. And it seems like pretty much on every trip, because I always forget something, I have to go in Walmart. All right, that seems to have been successful. Now I just have to check out and uh, I've made it out of here alive. And of course, the closer I got to St. Mary, the larger those mountains loomed on the horizon. The scenery on the road headed towards St. Mary was spectacular. And personally, I think the view looking back was even better than the one looking forward. And once I got into St. Mary, the view from my motel, the Red Eagle Inn, wasn't too shabby either. So before I clean up for the evening, I stopped and I found myself a cigar at one of the town pumps, little filling stations they have around here. They uh, had a part of this cigar there. So I got it. I'm going to sit down and enjoy this and uh, just gaze at this amazing view.
All right, all cleaned up. So it's uh, time to go check out the cafe and see about having some dinner. Johnson's Cafe, right there on the grounds of the Red Eagle Inn, is a really nice place. It has great ambiance, and I have to tell you, the food was really good. I was quite impressed with it. I decided to go with their special, which was what they called huckleberry beef. Essentially, it was roast beef in this huckleberry sauce. And I didn't really know what to expect, but I really enjoyed it. It was really good. Well, that was very good. They have a nice uh, little cafe restaurant there. So I said really good. Uh, I don't know if they're open for breakfast or not. Let me check that. No breakfast, so I'll be finding that on the road. Originally, on day 12, my plan was to leave St. Mary and ride through Glacier National Park up going to the Sun Road. Unfortunately, however, the road still wasn't open even in late June. Right? It was only open on the west side up to a certain point, and then on the east side, again, it was just open for a very short distance. So, being that I couldn't travel all the way through, I decided to take another route up to cross the Canadian border. From Montana, I took the Chief Mountain Highway up to the Canadian border. That is known as the Chief Mountain Crossing, and you immediately jump on Alberta Route 6 after making your declarations of no drugs, no guns. Route 6 runs through Canada's Waterton Lakes National Park and of course offers some amazing mountain views. I just stopped for a little break at Tim Hortons. Thanks, Todd. He gave me a Tim Hortons card. So I used it for the first time now that I'm back in Canada. And uh, we're gonna get on the road and continue on. Uh, just a beautiful day today. I hear there may be some showers this afternoon, but that's all right, as long as we stay away from the snow. As happens quite often, when I take a break, I usually meet some really nice folks. For the rest of the day, I traveled past these beautiful mountain views and also ran into a little bit of traffic, especially as I got closer to my destination, which was Radium Hot Springs, a little mountain resort town.
My motel for the evening would be the Destination Inn, which was definitely the best place I had stayed up to that point, and I think in the top two of the entire trip. In particular, I fell in love with the shower head. So that was awesome. It was a great shower. I love that shower head. Great hot water. Mm. While not cheap, the Destination Inn is clean, comfortable, and in a great location near the downtown area. All right, all cleaned up. And uh, now I'm gonna go up here and walk around the uh, main street here. They got a lot of shops and things. and. I'm sure some kind of restaurants that I can find. I'm hungry. I haven't eaten anything today since that uh, little breakfast burrito at uh, Tim Hortons. Well, there's a cannabis store. I guess that's a plus. There are several restaurants to choose from in this little Main Street area, but the one that caught my eye was this one, the Steamboat Lounge, looked like it was a fairly new establishment. And I know that this is blasphemy for all you guys that like to spend $10 a day on food. But you know something? Life is short, so sometimes you gotta stay in the nice places and you gotta eat the good food. And today I was daring and I went with the bison short ribs. Your chocolate mousse cheesecake with triple berry compote and a hazelnut griddle. Wow. And tell all these people that I'm doing this for them. You are doing this for them. All right. Yes. Thank you. Yep, this was Pamper Craig Day. But of course, there was no way I was going to finish all of that. Well, that was an awesome meal. Uh, that was the Steamboat Lounge um, here in Radium. And um, I just decided, what the hell, <laughs> let's splurge a little. So I got uh, those bison short ribs, and then I uh, tried a piece of the chocolate mousse cake. Couldn't finish it, just had a couple of bites. So I'll take it back to the room and it's early, so who knows? Maybe later on I'll want a midnight snack. But uh, it was really great. Uh, the, the waitress in there was, uh, was really nice. She was great. Uh, we were chatting a little bit. She's from uh, near McBride, where I'll, where I'll be headed tomorrow. So uh, she was telling me about uh, riding horses there and, and uh, things like that. So uh, uh, it was a nice evening. Uh, now we'll just go back to the hotel and relax a little bit. Well, I'm going to walk up town here first. Well, I sure wasn't going to have any ice cream after that cheesecake. So I headed back to the room, made myself some green tea, and got ready for bed. So on these trips, I'm usually in bed at least by 9, or sometimes I even start getting tired like tonight. At around 8.30, oh, God. I start uh, closing the shades up and getting ready for bed. Of course, I'll probably be up at 5 and then try to go back to bed till 6. Finally get up, make some coffee, and uh, start thinking about heading out for the day. So it's getting to be that time. So... I think I'm going to bed. Next up, I visit the Icefields Parkway, Mount Robson, the world's largest fly rod, and continue to struggle with coffee makers. <laughs> 